Man, oh man, do we have a big week coming up for the stock market this week, guys. We have the FOMC meeting, the CPI data is coming out, we have the press conference, which is going to be huge. That's, I believe, on Wednesday, right? We're going to break down everything in this video, and we also have some earnings coming out from Oracle, Adobe, Trip.com, and a bunch of other ones that we're going to break down. And I want to go over, just in general, where my head's at right now, you know, what the markets are looking like in general, and the futures, as the futures are are open right now and they're slightly in the red and mind you guys I'm, I'm not sure if you could tell i sound like crap right now and my my voice is kind of off I, I might i don't i don't think i have a fever or the flu or anything like that but i do have a little bit of a cold again as you guys can tell so we're gonna we're gonna power through this video i have my tea right here which i'm gonna take a sip of and if you all find value hit that like button subscribe get your 20 stocks for moo moo link down below Limited time holiday promotion. And with that being said, let's just dive into the video. So listen, guys, markets, you guys know, have been, you know, all over the place, right? Spy last week, let's pull it up here. Spy last week went from 406. That was on the 5th of the month. So about uh, six days ago, went from 406 down to 390. And that, and that was in a couple of days. We're talking a 4% drop in a couple of days. And then you can see here, I think this is on Wednesday. Uh, yeah, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we pretty much held flat at 390, 392. And you could argue that we have a descending triangle. Let me pull this up. You guys can see uh, we have a descending triangle, right? Lower highs are being made. Boom, 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 boom. But we're also holding 390, 392. So for this week, that's going to be a big point. If 390 breaks on SPY, descending triangle plays out, we're probably going 380, 385. Who knows? Maybe even lower. And right now, the futures market has been open, like I said, about 20 minutes. It is not looking good. It's it's selling off. Futures are red. We have the Dow futures down 0.14%. You guys see that? Uh, you know, this is already kind of playing out, the descending triangle. You guys see that here on the Dow? Uh, this is slowly playing out. Dow futures are down. We have the NASDAQ futures down about a quarter of a percent. You guys see that? And the S&P, let's see here. Excuse me, guys. Um, the S&P futures are down 0.2%. Uh, percent. So we're selling off all across the board. And mind you, I mean, this could flip overnight. I mean, we've seen that happen uh, time and time again. So keep in mind, you know, just because the futures are red now doesn't mean they necessarily have to be red in the morning or that they're going to be red in the morning. But... They're red now, which means, you know, they're continuing the Friday sell-off. Uh, the sell-off's continuing, which on Friday, the NASDAQ went down 0.6%. S&P down, it went down three quarters of a percent. And we had the Dow go down uh, about 09 as the uh, Russell, somewhere in there. I think it went down over 1%, if I remember uh, correctly. So, futures are red right now. We have a clear descending triangle, like I said, on SPY. Um, on this 20-day chart, which I'm going to be watching very, very, uh, you know, closely this week. And I have an eyelash in my freaking eye, guys. Not only is my throat killing me, but eyelashes are getting in my eyes now. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, keep your eyes on that. And let me see here on Triple Q. Uh, do we have an, um, uh, what's it called, a descending triangle? Yeah, we kind of do. Look at that. Uh, well, it's, it's kind of a head and shoulders. Yeah, I remember now. I talked about this last week. You guys can see we have the left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder, and pretty much Triple Q is holding on by a thread right now above 278. If this point breaks, we're probably going to go down 273, maybe even lower than that. You guys can see here if I pull up the four-hour chart on Triple Q, um, you know, this is not looking the most bullish, and it's pretty much holding on by a th Well, it, it's still holding the uptrend, but it's holding it by a thread, right? If that right shoulder, you know, falls under 278, 273, you know, this is really going to, you know, start selling off. The sell-off will really start at that point um, to accelerate. So on Tuesday, CPI data is coming out at 8.30 a.m. on the East Coast, which we've been waiting for this, well, since the last CPI data report, which uh, the last CPI report was a month ago. Um, you know, th this is something that everybody and their grandma watches every single month because inflation's been running high. I mean, three years ago, four or five years ago, sure, people track this stuff, but not like they're doing it now. Let's just put it that way because, again, everybody's watching this, um, you know, because a lot of people are using, they're not using inflation, but they're, you know, they're de determining their investments based on what inflation is looking like, or at least they take inflation into account when they make their investments, not for the whole, you know, thesis of an investment, obviously, uh, but it's something that everybody's looking at. So that's looking to be projected to be 
an increase of 0.3% uh, month over month, which annualized, that is an increase of 7.3%. And I, if I remember correctly, um, last report was a 0.4% increase. So that's a little decline there month over month, um, you know, on the month number and the annualized number last, uh, last month was, was it 7.7? 7? I think so. So if it comes down to 7.3, all right, inflation still hot, still very high, but slowly, uh, you know, creeping down a little bit more, right? Which is, which is a pretty good sign. And on Wednesday, we have the FOMC statement at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which that's always fun. So that's on Wednesday. And then we have the press conference 30 minutes after that at 2.30, which you guys know, Jerome Powell, the press conference, the uh, the speech that he's going to give. We're going to get a bunch of, you know, Qs and As, right? Questions and answers, hopefully. <laughs> and a lot of people are expecting a 50 basis point hike, right? 50 basis point hike. And a lot of people have been going back and forth on that as well. They're like, oh, wait a second. Labor market is still pretty hot. You know, it's it's not looking like unemployment's creeping up at all. It, it remained unchanged based on the last report. So people are like, are they going to do 75? You know, are they going to do 50 or are they going to do 75? Uh, but seems like the consensus right now is still a 50 basis point hike for the meeting this week. And that would increase the Fed funds rate to a 4.5% um, number, which it's lower than inflation. <coughs> that's for sure. Um, so is it going to bring down inflation at four and a half percent? I'm not hundred percent convinced yet. And obviously there's multiple tools to bring down inflation. It's not only the fed funds rate. Uh, but you know, if, if we're solely looking at that four and a half percent is obviously lower than the projected, uh, 7.3% that inflation is going to come in at projected. So, yeah, what do you guys think about that? On Thursday, we have the core retail sales data coming out at 8.30 a.m. on the East Coast. So that's going to be interesting. And I think we have some PM, PMI or not PMI. Um, oh, crap. What else is on Friday? I'm forgetting now. Um, either way, we'll, we'll talk about that as, as the week unfolds. Make sure you guys subscribe as always. Um, so core retail sales, 8.30 a.m. on Thursday. That's expected to be. Uh, up 0.2% based on um, this number. And if you guys didn't know, there's this website um, called, let me see here, um, www.forexfactory.com slash calendar. If you guys want to see major events, economic events going on every day, you know, throughout the week, not only in the U.S., but in other countries as well, go to www. <laughs> forexfactory.com slash calendar. And no, this is not a sponsor. This is what I use um, to, 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 to just look at uh, upcoming, you know, data, upcoming events that are worth looking at or worth paying attention to, right? So let me say it again. If you guys want to go check it out, www.forex, F-O-R-E-X, factory.com slash calendar. You guys probably know about that already, uh, but well, maybe not all of you, uh, but if you didn't know, Go check it out. You'll see all the upcoming events and things that you need to pay attention to. So, yeah, needless to say, guys, it is going to be a very big week, a very impactful week, you know, as well. Uh, the markets are definitely going to be moving big time in either, in either direction uh, based on what we're going to get this week for sure. You know, it's honestly... This week probably determines whether or not we're legitimately going to get a Santa Claus rally. I mean, that, that's the reality of the matter here, guys. And, and especially the sentiment, you know, from the Fed on, on that Wednesday meeting. That's very important. CPI is obviously very important, but how the Fed reacts to it on Wednesday, what's, you know, what is said during that press conference, how are the, you know, answers, you know, how, what are the questions, what are the answers, right? So, a lot to pay attention to. And when it comes to earnings, guys, now let's transition a little bit. And mind you, it's going to be a decent earnings week this week. We have something to talk about. We have Oracle this week. Let's pull it up. Oracle is on, let me see here. I believe um, Oracle's on the 12th. So that is, oh, tomorrow, Monday. So tomorrow, Monday after the bell, we have Oracle, which is now down about five bucks from the recent high. In other words, about 6%. And it looks like the trend is still holding. And it looks like buyers have come in at this old level of resistance, which is good. Um, you know, it's, it looks like it's holding as support, right? So as long as Oracle's above or right around 80, it starts breaking over 81, I think bulls are going to gain momentum there. But again, we have earnings coming up. So 
Who knows how that's going to go? EPS is looking to be roughly a dollar eighteen, according to these estimates, on revenue of twelve point oh four billion, which would be up about sixteen percent uh, year over year. So not bad there for Oracle on those estimates. But again. Their estimates. Uh, so who knows if you know what the numbers are actually um, going to be? But overall, Oracle it needs to hold eighty. If the bulls can hold eighty, we might be making a move back to that mid eighty level. Uh, you guys can see the all time high on the stock <coughs> it was one hundred six bucks back in uh, about a year ago, December of twenty one. If that point, you know, if we start cracking above eighty five, ninety, that's where this thing could be going. So I'm going to set my alert. Let's do it now at, um, let's do it at 85 bucks. Mark is at or above 85 bucks uh, a share. Let me take a sip of this tea again, guys. I hope you all in, are enjoying the video. So Oracle, big, big one for this week. We also have Adobe, which is one of my favorite companies out there. Do I own the stock right now? No, I would love to own it at some point, uh, but the valuation is not there yet for me. But overall, they're this week as well. Let me see here what day they're reporting. Um, they're on the 15th, so they're on Thursday. Yeah, Thursday, I believe. Yeah, Thursday after the bell. Let me see here. Yeah, Thursday after the bell, Adobe is reporting, and they're looking to do 350 in EPS on revenue of 4.53 billion, up 10% year over year. Not too bad. So they're going to be growing rev year over year, just like Oracle. If those estimates come in, uh, or, or if the numbers are actually you know right around those estimates, and this stock chart, I mean, clearly is being dominated by the bears. But again, it's still not at a point where I would want to buy it quite yet. And I hope it fails here. I mean, look at this. We are clearly, like I said, being dominated by the Bears. Uh, I hope this fails at 300. If this thing starts falling under 300 to the 270s, under that point, Adobe is going to be one I'm adding for sure, heavily, right? Especially in the low 200s, if it's able to get there, right? Excuse me, guys. Um, yeah, Adobe looks pretty decent right here, you know, as a long-term play, if it comes down a little bit more, right? So... Next one is Trip.com, and I do apologize if I am, you know, zooming through these stocks, guys. Again, I'm a little bit under the weather. I'm not feeling the best. Make sure to subscribe, though, because we will be feeling a little bit better in a couple of days, and uh, hopefully, I, hopefully I feel better in a couple of days. I mean, I freaking hope so, guys. Uh, but, again, we're powering through the video. I appreciate you all, as always. Trip.com. Wait a second. No, this is TripAdvisor. What the heck is Trip.com, then? Wait a second. Trip Advisor is that the same as no? Trip dot what's what is Trip dot com? They're reporting this week. Um, I forget their ticker symbol. What is that? Wait a second. Oh man, this is a brain fart. Is this is this uh, a symptom or a uh, is this a side of or not a side effect? But is this part of the sickness here, guys? I can't remember Trip dot com's ticker symbol. Let me actually look it up here on, on the. Uh, on the uh, internet real quick. Hold on, guys. Give me a second. Uh, and by the way, if you haven't gotten your 20 free stocks from Moomoo, use that link down below. Deposit any amount of money, or that's for Weeble, actually, any amount of money. That There's another brain fart. And you get 12 stocks from Weeble. But on Moomoo, deposit at least 100 bucks, and you get up to uh, 50, 20 stocks. Yeah, 20 stocks now, each up to 2,000 bucks. Make sure you guys go do that. Link down below. So let me actually look this up. Trip.com, ticker, Symbol. Why is this not working? Or what the heck is the ticker symbol on this company? Oh, TCOM. Okay, I didn't even know that. <laughs> I was way off on that. Okay, TCOM. Trip.com. There we go. They're reporting earnings on... Let me see here. They're reporting earnings on the 15th? 15th, I think. 14th. Okay, 14th, which is on Wednesday after uh, after the bell. So Trip.com just hit an all-time high, I believe. Let me double-check. It hit 34 bucks. Now it's pulling back a little bit to 32 right by the moving average here on the uh, four-hour chart. Let me see. All-time high was hit. Actually, no. We are well off the all-time highs. Holy crap. Uh, all-time highs were hit back in 2017 um, You know, at 60 bucks. Now we're at 32 bucks. We're down 45% from all-time highs, down 45%. In the past couple of years. So TCOM not looking the best, but honestly, it does look pretty good in the short term on the four hour chart on the yearly chart. It does look pretty decent. Um, so let's see. I mean, or not the three year chart, but the, the, the yearly chart. Yeah, look at that. We just took out 30 bucks. That's a big resistance. So who's to say this can't go to 40? I mean, there's poss that's, that's definitely a possibility. They're looking to do three cents in EPS on a revenue of three hundred forty two mil uh, million. 
which would be up 42% year over year. Unbelievable. So TCOM is breaking out on the yearly chart, the four-year chart. Let's see. Let's see how it plays out, guys. And another one here is Darden Restaurants, which is DRI. Let's pull that up. Uh, DRI has also been in a stealth bull market. So stealth bull market for DRI, stealth bull market for Trip.com, Adobe, not so much. Uh, but Oracle, I think stealth bull market... Uh, yeah, it's been doing pretty well the past couple of weeks, Oracle has. So going back to DRI, which is Darden Restaurants, they own restaurants like Olive Garden, you know, Capitol Grill, uh, Yard House, Bahama, what the hell is that one called? Um, Seasons 52, bah Bahama Breeze? Do they own Bahama Breeze? I got, I got a good look into that. Double check. Uh, but they own a bunch. They own a bunch that I'm sure you guys have dined at. And the stock's been doing well. I mean, it went from 110 back in June to now $142. This is a 30% move. And we have earnings coming up, which they're on, uh, let me see here, the 16th, which I believe is on Friday. Uh, is that on Friday? I'm mixing up my days here, guys. Oh, my goodness. Let's see here. Um, 16th is on Friday. Yes, I'm correct on that. So they're looking to do a dollar 43 in earnings per share on revenue of $2.42 billion, which would be up almost 7% year over year. So this is one that I'd be looking at as a continuation play, potentially. Uh, same thing as uh, with Trip.com here and with Oracle. But again, with Adobe, I'd love to see it kind of as a, you know, a long-term position. If it were to get, like I mentioned, you know, under 300, 275 into the lower 200s, I would have loved to make this a big um, individual stock holding. So let me see what else we have going on here individual stock wise. Um, Chewy's been running. We have Chewy, which went up 4%. This is one that I'm watching at 46 bucks. If it breaks that 50 bucks could be next. Tesla's wrestling right now with 180. Will it break? I'm not too convinced. You know, it's still under the moving averages. We have a head and shoulders. This looks like it wants to collapse in my personal opinion. Uh, LYV is one that's worth watching as well. Let's pull it up. <clears throat> LYV, uh, if this starts moving past, I'd say the mid 70s, which it looks like it's been testing that. You know, let's let's see if it even breaks. But if it does, this could be one that starts moving. Uh, you know, maybe towards that 80, 82 mark. Let's see what other ones here. Vici and CrowdStrike. Let's pull those up. Vici is one that we have an inverse head and shoulders on, and this is a Vegas REIT, Las Vegas REIT. So there is a little bit of inherent risk in this. Um, you know, because <clears throat> again, we're in a recession right now. Vegas is being hit. Uh, Tourism is being hit a little bit. So there could be some issues with this one. But as a trade, it looks pretty good. You know, if it does break 34, 35, uh, we might have some more upside there on Vici. Let's pull up. Uh, what's the other one I just mentioned? CrowdStrike. Ah, CrowdStrike doesn't look that great. Uh, Disney. Let's pull Disney up. Let's see. Disney, 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 Disney. Disney doesn't look that great either. Snap. What's Snap looking like? Come on, Snap. God dang it. There we go. <laughs> uh, Mercado Libre. No, Snapchat looks bad. Mercado Libre. Ah, doesn't look that great either. If I pull this up, let me see. Uh, we do have a little bit of a, of a wedge here. What direction are we going to pick? I don't know. That's the million-dollar question. You know, if, if Melly starts breaking out of 1,000, that, that'd be great. I have another alert at 1030. That'd be great if that were to break. Um, so let me do that now. Mark is out above 1,000. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not many more stocks that I do want to get into. I can't believe I made it 18 minutes without really coughing much or uh, really taking any breaks. I'm, I'm surprised, honestly, because usually, guys, when I'm feeling a little bit under the weather, I like to edit the videos. Uh, but in this case, screw it. I'm not editing. We, we just went through the whole thing in one take and we're looking good guys so with that being said again it's going to be a big week i hope you guys do well this week let me know your thoughts in the comments hit the like button subscribe and don't forget to get your stocks from moomoo from weeble and check out my patreon i'm revamping and and doing a complete uh maybe not a complete over um over on or i'm not, not i'm not changing it up completely but i am switching some things up in the patreon so if you guys want to check that out Link down below or go to stylesurfest.com slash Patreon. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for tuning in. Peace out.